Are we ready? Yes, we are, and today we are dehydrating hash browns. Hash browns. Uh, and breaded hash browns. And breaded ha hash browns. Uh, Kate will bring you up to speed on that. Okay, well, the first thing we did was peel the potatoes. And uh, you keep them in a pot of cold water while you're doing the peeling so they don't turn brown and stuff like that. And then you bring this pot up to a boil and you mix two teaspoons of ascorbic acid, which is vitamin C, per quart of water. And I ended up using a gallon of water for 12 of these potatoes. And I use a basket just because it's easier. You put them on at a full boil, bring it back to a boil for four minutes. Then you take it out, and I had this filled with ice cubes and cold water. And you plunge it in there, and all your potatoes, you plunge it in there, and let it sit for 15 minutes to completely stop the cooking process. Now the reason you do the blanching is to kill the enzymes that turns the fruit uh, potentially moldy or discolored or whatever like that. And the ascorbic acid also helps with that process. Then I put the potatoes in the fridge on this towel just to keep them, get them to dry. And I just left them there until they were good and cold so that when you slice them, they don't fall apart and that sort of thing. So that was the first step. I'll go get her. Yeah. Right now. So now that they're good and cold, I'm going to take them and shred them. I've already done one tray. I'm only able to do two trays because that's all of these little mesh liners I have for my dehydrator. Definitely need to get some more. And I'm going to use my food processor on the uh, grating uh, thing. And I usually have to cut these and have to get them through here. See how nice they cut once they're cold. So, stick them in there. This is going to be a little noisy. And you end up with these grated hash browns. That you just kind of spread around. to get them fluffy because they'll dry faster. Processors got a little sticky with all these potatoes in here. Well, either that or it's got uh, it's camera shy. It's camera shy, yes, that's it. In which case you just. I don't know that I'm getting the perfect picture of this processing thing going on. But that. You got the picture. 
about cleaning out my little processor because they get sticky. Did you uh, spray it with anything? Oh, you don't want to do that. You want these potatoes left all natural. There we go. Make it a mess. Make it a big old mess. Good thing I cleaned my counters. Those we can just fry up for dinner. getting real sticky with this many potatoes that I'm doing. Okay, well, we'll see how far we go on the basket. There's a hunk that we can fry up for dinner. Didn't quite grate. Sounds great to me. <laughs> <laughs> yes, cute. I know. <laughs> Sort of like short spaghetti. But when we get this all filled up, what we're gonna do is set the dehydrator at about 135 degrees. It's my favorite temperature for this sort of stuff. And let it go for a minimum of six hours. But we test it. In fact, it'll probably end up going overnight. But when we test it, it should break like something brittle. Not be any, at the least bit soft at all. So these dehydrated things, how do you eat them? Do you add water? Yeah, you add, um, you soak them in warm or room temperature water. Um, two to one ratio, two cups of water to one cup of potatoes for a couple of hours. Or if you're doing other types of things like cubed potatoes for stews or whatever, you can just throw them in the stew because they're going to absorb the liquid. Yeah, I'd say that basket's pretty well full. Everything else here we'll have for dinner tonight. Yeah. So let me wash my hands off real quick. Alright. Here's the top of the dehydrator. And as you can see, I have, well, I must have heated that one. Have this set here at 135 degrees. Yes, I see that. So, I'll just go plug it in and let it do its thing. Thanks for watching. Hey, what? That's it. Peace and love from Oregon. Peace and love from Oregon. <laughs>
get into the baggie a little easier. Now, this was a total of about 10 potatoes, medium size. Not the big bakers or anything like that. They look pretty dry. They look good and dry, nice and crispy. Okay. So I have this freezer Ziploc bag. Layout. Hash browns with the directions. You soak two parts water and one part hash browns and then they're ready to go. And you don't have to refrigerate these. Nope, no refrigeration necessary. I wonder what the um, nutrition is. Uh, probably uh, a lot of starch and carbs. <laughs> That's the same with any potato, though. True. Potatoes. Oh, potatoes. Good sight to any meal. So this could go downstairs. I keep this with my dry goods, which I keep up this level. Oh, okay. Try to get the air out of the bag as much as possible. We're not going to take these. Oh, yeah. I will. You will. Huh? There we go. Okay. Um, smile. Yes. <laughs> and say something about peace. It's very peaceful here. And your dog is barking outside. <laughs> okay, okay. Here is our uh, potatoes that we could use because they were shredded. I mean, not shredded. Uh, Those are scraps. Scraps. There you go. Scraps from last night, and we're eating them uh, today for breakfast. Aha! Oh, those look good. So today's effort is pumpkin pie cake. No, applesauce cake, but I'm making my own pumpkin pie spice mix. Oh. Nutmeg. 
nutmeg. Nutmeg. Oh, <laughs> two nutmegs. That one's empty. No, I'm going to actually relabel that and use it for a, you know, uh, for the pumpkin pie spice jar. Uh -huh. okay. My one teaspoon doesn't fit in there, so I'm going to put in four half teaspoons of nutmeg. teaspoon of ground cloves. Aha, fits. <laughs> and a little whisk. And give it a real good mix. has a whisk. Yep. Very nice. Yes. Alright, now I'm going to relabel my old nutmeg jar to say pumpkin pie spice. And I'll put all of that in there. Aha! 